all great truths begin as blasphemy. You think about the travel industry. You know, the automobile was once maligned because it scared the horses. Planes couldn't fly. They're too heavy, right? Until recently, who's going to pay to rent my spare room or let me drive them around in my car? Or how the heck are the Kardashians still a thing? Although, actually, that's something my wife and I are still trying to figure out. Um, so let me tell you just a little bit about Amparity. Um, Amparity is this incredibly disruptive company. The co-founders are serial entrepreneurs. The investors and backers were early in Amazon, Facebook, Exact Target, LinkedIn, Concur, Spotify, and more. Um, I was actually serving as Microsoft Senior Executive for Travel and Hospitality. Previously, I led JD Power and Associates Global Travel and Hospitality Practice. And Microsoft CEO Satya identified this company and reached out to the CEO called Amparity because it was based in Seattle because he saw what they were doing around customer data and marketing and personalization and customer experience was truly innovative. You know, nobody was trying to automate a horse, right, and make it just incrementally go faster. It took a stepwise innovation to change the paradigm. And I think you'll see a parallel when it comes to Amparity as well. So let's talk about you know, personalization. Don't take my word for it, right? These are the experts, and we, we've heard personalization. This is McKinsey, BCG, Harvard Business, right? You look at the one in the middle, 800 billion of revenue opportunity. What's really fascinating to me is it's this 15% of companies that get it right are gonna disproportionately accrue the benefit, right? Not everybody's gonna be like Netflix and Amazon. And if you have legacy systems, legacy approaches, Right? You only have so much time and money to catch up. You need a game changer to change from the current paradigm. So we know this actually from Amparity clients. This isn't in the hypothetical. These are real customer results from travel, hospitality, retail companies. It's just to let you know who we work with. Alaska Airlines. We've got two great folks from Alaska Airlines today. They were an anchor client. We work with Rin Resorts, MGM, Starbucks, TGI Friday's innovative CIO cited us in the Wall Street Journal. We work with all of Gap's brands, Brooks Running, Kendra Scott, and more. These are global companies just like yours that have the same struggles with customer data. And these kind of double and triple digit improvements are very typical of our customers. You look at tens of millions of dollars of ancillary revenue, and you look at things like a 50% increase in marketable audience, and I'll talk a little bit about how we do it. So truly breakthrough types of results. Now, this is something, I'm gonna give you three examples from our world. And I imagine all of you have gotten an email from a company and you're like, yeah, you really don't know me, and you should. So here was one I got recently. Hey, Stuart, great deals from New York to Buenos Aires, only X number of dollars. That's great, Buenos Aires is wonderful, right? But I live in San Francisco. And geez, airline, you know I live in San Francisco. You have my home address. And by the way, if you take a look, you know where I fly from and to, and I originate out of SFO. Here's another one. Hey, sign up for our credit card. That's great. But I actually already have your card, right? This travel provider knows this. A third example, I just went into a website of one of the major rental car companies, and I was greeted by this great 20% offer, right? I'm excited. All right, this sounds great. What do I need to do? Sign up for a 50 plus AARP membership. And AARP is a great organization. Now, I've lived hard in my 20s. Probably some of you had some wild years, and my hairline's not what it used to be. But I'm not 50. Imagine if somebody tweeted that on social. Imagine how that could distance someone. It doesn't matter whether it's 40, 50, 60, whatever age. Right? These companies have smart people, just like yourselves. They're working incredibly hard. right? They have the data, they just can't connect the dots. And you might say, okay, this is the upside, so maybe we're not gonna be as fast, but did you know that 41% of consumers dropped a brand last year due to poor personalization? Right? Think about that AARP offer. Right? It's no longer okay right, to not know me as well as you should. So we find there are four things holding companies back. And I'd ask, show of hands, how many of you don't have direct access to your customer data? Show of hands. Okay. Right? So one of the first problems we talk to hundreds of companies, they, they, they don't have access to their own data. Right? The second thing is, and this might be a little more esoteric, but most companies are using only a small set of their known customer data. They've got all of this data, 
But if they can't match the data, if you use a different email address, right? If you have something that was fat fingered, if it was something that, geez, I lived at a different address, I worked at a different company, if I don't have a key, I can't actually connect the data to know that these 20 records are actually the same person. And I'm emailing and marketing to them as if they're separate. Or incomplete profiles, right? So the example of, you know that I fly out of San Francisco, you have the data that says I live in San Francisco, but IT is so busy, and the way they're going about it, there's no time and money at scale to actually connect the data that I live in San Francisco to your email offers. Okay. And the fourth thing is, even if they get this, right, limited actionability. So then you've got to take that and actually put it into motion, whether it's social advertising, whether it's email, whatever type of personalization in the experience. You have to be able to do this at scale. We have customers with 100 million plus customers, right? You, you have large organizations, many of you. Um, let, let me ask before I do, how many of you have at least one of these problems? Show of hands. Okay. Two of these problems. Show of hands. Okay. Three. I can see people are flagging. I'm going to have to speed it up. Lunch is coming so that people don't fade. So here's the thing. You have all these investments, great app personalization, web personalization. There are tons of these wonderful companies you have. But your ability to personalize and scale is only as good as the quality of the customer profiles on which all of those great investments are, are running, right? And your ability to action on it. So all the investment in technology and people and process and all the things you're doing to personalize are only as good as your ability to lever the data you have and act on it. So let me ask, if 6% of companies today have a single view of their customers, but 90% say it's a top priority. Why is that? Why is it if we think 90% of us think that this is a priority, only 6% have achieved this so-called single view? Right? Smart people working hard. It's because the approach fundamentally doesn't get you there. The way everybody's been trying to solve the problem, right, incrementally automating the legacy approach, not innovating, is standing in the way. So you have all the data. We touched on this. This is you know, Harvard Business Review quote. You have the data already to make this incredible customer 360. Now, we killed two analysts putting this slide together alone. This is such an ugly slide. And a third was driven insane, literally, from trying to do this. But the reality is, whether you realize it or not, this ugly picture is what most of your companies, even some of the digital companies, many of which, go through, and I'll just talk to it at a very high level. On the left, you have all your sources of your known customer data. It might be e-commerce, right? It might be a contact center, it might be web click stream, right? You have all of this data, and your tech group has to do this thing called ETL. They have to extract the data, clean it up, they have to transform, they have to load it somewhere. That is a huge amount of time and resource and energy. And once they do that, oh yeah, we've got to plan the schema, and then we've got to monitor all the data pipes in and out, and let's put it into an enterprise data warehouse or a data lake, some central repository. Well, that's just co-location. All you've done is finally put all the data in one place. You haven't resolved the issue that you might have 10 different records for the same person, and you have no way of reconciling that. So you create these partial profiles. Many companies also do this thing where they say, you know what? I got 95% sure that these 10 records are you, sir. I'm going to call that 100. But everything else that's 94% or less, I'm just throwing that data out. I don't have a matching key. I'm calling fuzzy logic. I'm calling something that's probabilistic, and I'm saying it's deterministic, because I need that. I need to be able to confirm transactions. Well, even if you get that, what does IT have to do? They have to control access. Somebody has to pull a list. The data gets old after a while. They have to load it. And even once they've done that, and I'm getting tired just talking to this slide, they have to do ETL on the way out, and then orchestrate this to all of your channels. Now, I heard somebody earlier talk about um, having a great way of getting all the kind of contact center channels and being able to pull that subset of customer data together, right? That's on a small scale. Imagine all the data you have being able to pull together. So Amparity was actually built for enterprise. We literally have customers that have trillion entries, right? If you think about 100 million customers and maintaining every email open, right, every contact center contact, every piece of data you have on that customer in every way. And if you have multiple brands, imagine being able to look across your brands and actually understand how many unique customers you have across those different P&Ls. So this is what we do, four things. We're able, at record speed, to bring all of your data in. We use machine learning 
to create the most robust profiles possible out of all of your known customer data. We enable you to have direct access and on the fly create segments, micro segments, that you can immediately target and orchestrate out through all of your channels with the similar speed. So let's talk about ingestion. Remember that big ETL. Think about how much time and money and resource goes into IT just getting the data out. That's gone away. These guys said when we founded the company, hey, founders, day one, we're not going to do ETL. What's a better way? They take the data raw. Right? They literally say, just point us to your data sources. We'll confirm a couple things. It doesn't burden IT. It takes very light touch, and we can pull that data up. Using machine learning, there are 40 algorithms that can understand if something's a date field, a name field. It derives semantic meaning. It's able to understand what used to be a huge manual process. And by the way, it can clean, normalize, and store that data at scale, as much data as you have from any and all of your known data sources. So this is an actual quote from Alaska Airlines. And this was Jeannie Jones. Jeannie was not, we weren't saying, hey, Jeannie, give us a quote. I've got a presentation. She was talking to a senior executive at Alaska, and she said, you know, the same data set that took eight plus months of customer to stand up, and by the way, it didn't have the same kind of efficacy in Oracle, we did in less than two weeks with Amperity. Right? This is disruptive. This is innovative, not automated, right? This is taking a fundamentally different approach to your customer data. When we talk about the nature of data, right, it's, it's probabilistic. We have a ton of data. Wouldn't it be great if everybody just gave you all their information all the time when they did a, a transaction with you or when you emailed with them? Well, the reality is data is messy. So you have data that you can connect with high confidence, but most of the travel companies and retailers as well have a whole lot of data that looks like this where, okay, maybe the email address is the name's a little there, some things are a little off. I'm pretty sure this is the same person, right? but I'm not positive. And then you have a whole lot of data that looks like this, where names, nicknames, other email addresses, they're things that are unique. right? And all this data gets thrown out in most companies. And this is maintained persistently. So over time, as you get new data, I just moved. right? All of your companies are going to assume, well, I'm not quite sure if I don't have these keys if this is the same Stuart Greif at this new address who was at the old address. I'm not, not sure if I can connect the dots. So what Amparity does is it embraces the nature of this data. It doesn't say throw most of it out. It says, yeah, there are times I'm going to need in the green full confidence. You booked a hotel. You booked a cruise. You booked a plane. I better be darn sure that I send the confirmation to the right person. But there's all this other data that allows you to personalize this kind of high confidence and medium confidence. And all of that is persistently maintained. Now, over time, the probabilities are constantly changing. New records come in and out. And that whole kind of approach that everybody uses to create this clean database with ETL, as soon as that gets clean, the very next day it degrades. Why? You have an OTA transaction, right? You get new records. This actually maintains on a persistent basis the unity of an ID across all these areas. Well, as I mentioned, when you book travel, yeah, you want to be 100% sure you send it to the right person. But there are things like email personalization, app personalization, where if you can personalize better and lever some of that other data, you are going to have disproportionately positive impact in terms of higher revenues and also lower costs. And by the way, if you're doing lookalike models and matching in social, I don't care if I'm a little bit off in the personalization, right? I can use my known customers in this richness of data I couldn't access before at scale and be able to get much better results when I push through to social. So that's really kind of you know, a big core of um, something that no one else is doing, no company that we know is doing it. Um, how many of you heard of customer data platforms or CDPs? Show of hands. CDPs? How many of you, you think a CDP is something you can get a prescription from your doctor from? No? OK, I did the first time I heard it. We're, we're technically a CDP. So this ability, not manually, but in an automated way to stitch data together. And when we talk about direct access, it means on the left, if you have users that are more general type users, you can query your data in real time. We had uh, one of our clients, while we showed her how to do this, senior marketing executive said, Wow, this is magical. Did you just create a segment while we were talking? On the right, anyone that's in the analyst community, be it data analytics, marketing, other areas, we have sophisticated SQL. You can directly query your data. We don't hold it hostage. We don't want to. right? We want you to unleash the value of it. So what does that mean? 
That means you can create these micro segments. You can look and say, hey, I want to know my high value customers, everybody that spent X amount last year and the year before that so far this year hasn't. And I want to approach them with some sort of incentive to bring them back. It takes no time to set that up in the data and to orchestrate it out in the channels. And by the way, people fall in and out of segments all the time. Nobody's pulling a list and the data's getting old. So three weeks from now, three months from now, three years from now, that high value segment is still there. And whoever falls into it at that time, you're hitting those people and only those people. You're able to suppress people that no longer fall into that category. You just book something and you're able to reference, for example, their favorite restaurant because you connected that data too. Or you send me offers based on San Francisco to my favorite destinations that I'm probably going to pull the trigger on, not New York to Buenos Aires. Right? So one of the great things that we found about this is people are happier. Right? When you're not spending 70, 80% of the time doing this heavy lifting. And this is true of people in marketing, people in data analytics, and IT, and even the people in IT and data analytics who may feel threatened at first, saying, what do you mean no ETL? What am I going to do? Well, companies have hundreds of things they can't even get to. There is no kind of job loss that we've seen with our clients. They're able to do more with less and get to be able to do more enterprise goals. And they're spending 70% of their time on the things that add value that actually drive their business, that connect with customers. So this has been wonderful as part of it. So finally, um, your data can be either directly streamed. Some of our clients, because our speed to things like email channels is actually faster. Um, in other cases, we can dump it into a data analytics environment. A lot of clients do both. So the entire richness of that identity is available for people for internal uses, for analytics but also directly even streaming data live. So that speed on egress to all your orchestrations works just as quickly. And this is kind of the, the fundamental nature of what's been termed customer data platform. So even if you just walk away from this, let me look into customer data platforms. What I assert is that the founders of Amparity, not me, truly innovated in the space where others are simply automating. If you go with another CDP, you'll get incremental lift. You'll get incremental benefit. I think Air Canada, who I think is here, uses one that came out of the loyalty space. There were some that came from tag management. Those companies optimize for kind of the data model based on which they were based. And Parity is the only one I've seen, and it's the reason I joined from Microsoft. I had a pretty good job there. Um, that truly innovated and changed the game. And so this is what it looks like. Literally, from that mess to time to value in three months. We, we, we insist on piloting. We could go directly to implementation. We've had clients that want to. We insist in doing a pilot and saying, let's just show you in small scale, in 90 days. So we do something in 90 days that says, let's take some data that you've never connected before. In the case of the airline, it might be actually somebody's home city, and let's connect that to offers. And let's show you what the difference is in the take rates and how that translates to revenue and profit. So all your data quickly out, unified at scale, right? the ability to actually have direct access, and the ability to orchestrate it out. Um, Forrester, here's some comments um, in the space. Uh, I believe Forbes recently called um, customer data platforms the next marketing competitive advantage. And if you are a company that's behind with legacy, if you're competing, even if you're a digital company, this is a way to kind of leapfrog. If you are investing your future in yesterday's technology, don't expect a different outcome. That's why only 6% of the companies have achieved the so-called single view of the customer. So I just want to give you a couple quick studies. I know we're uh, up against lunch, so I wanted to try to speed things up. But you can look. Here's an example of Facebook advertising. Knowing richer data about the customers for lookalike modeling through your DMP, right? 27% reduction in customer acquisition costs while increasing overall conversion rates by 91%. Right? Double, triple digit breakthrough results. Loyalty targeting, we had a major travel player paid a big time consultancy using the best data to look at, hey, these are two merged brands, an acquired brand. What overlap do we have in those customers? How can we quickly get into marketing and loyalty and merging this faster? We found 2.3 times more connections and we did it at speed at scale and they spent north of a million dollars, right? They already had our platform. They didn't have to pay anything incrementally for that. When you think about personalized email marketing or customer 360, we're seeing tens of millions of dollars. And I'm just going to show you one, of the, one or two in depth. So this shows you this was just three data sources that the company couldn't connect. 
right? This was reservations, hotel cards, and loyalty database. And we're able to connect the dots, and you can see on the right all the segments because we had much richer known customer data um, profiles and we could do it at scale. Another example, conversion rates by 198%. Here we took six data sources. This is huge, terabytes of data at some of these large companies, right, that you have. The ability to do this at scale without requiring ETL and put this together, we have one of our clients that has 100 uh, micro segments that they've created to target and personalize. And I can't divulge, obviously, their proprietary outcomes in terms of revenue. But this has been order of magnitude better. We had one client that actually increased email volume by 80%. So more emails going out, you think revenue per email is going to go down, right? Actually went up close to 20%. That's the power if you get personalization right, if you can do it at scale. And here's the example with the merger. So if I were to leave you with one thought, innovate, don't automate. And with that, I'll take some questions and hopefully get you guys to lunch. I'm here both days, so I'm happy to have informal conversations as well. Great. Well, thank you, Stuart. That was fantastic. I'll start it off with a question here, which is uh, some of us, many of us in the room may, may be working with Salesforce. Mm -hmm. How does Imperity work with Salesforce or any other you know, CRM like that? Absolutely. So um, it works with not just CRM and Salesforce, but it plugs and plays with entire tech stacks. So the idea wasn't to displace or replace any other part of your ecosystem. It was saying, this is an area that doesn't have a SaaS solution, and how do we connect dots? So some of those large global clients, you think about Starbucks, you think about Alaska Airlines, you think about you know, Louis Vuitton, Moe Hennessy, Gap, et cetera, they have CRM as well. And so we sync with CRM. CRM MDMs weren't made to unify profiles at scale. They're exceptional at certain things, right? They can't store and tell you these 10 people and all of the data and every email open and every piece of data you would ever have on that customer. They can't do that. It's not because they don't have a role to play. They do. So many of our big customers, right, have CRM and other systems like that. And if you haven't heard about CDPs, don't worry. It's, this technology has only happened in the last two years or so that have really enabled this kind of machine learning at scale to deliver on something like Amparity. Other questions, challenges, chair throwing, everybody's hungry. Well, I'll ask one from, uh, from our friends at Slido, my favorite person, mm -hmm. Anonymous, who asked this. Uh, is there still a probability factor with machine learning to create Amparity profiles? Yeah, and, and you know, along those lines, um, our machine learning algorithms give you a couple of flavors. So it actually knows where the keyboard is, so what's the likelihood of somebody fat fingered a letter and it's a little bit off. It's not just your address and your um, you know, personal identification, it's contextual data we have on you, it's your click stream, it's behavioral. All of that is brought together. Um, machine learning, for example, the, one of the co-founders is Kabir Shahani. It knows that if you're looking for Kabir Shahani in Seattle, you have a higher likelihood of actually having a, a you know, unique person than if you look for Kabir Shahani in Delhi, India. And so all of these probabilities, every piece of data at an atomic level is being assigned a probability within a data set, across data sets, persistently. And that's constantly and changing as new data comes in. We don't think, when it comes to things like AI predictive, that we would be the, the end all be all. We think uh, companies should do best in breed in their MarTech stack. And if you want to do predictive segmentation or predictive types of things, we'll feed you that with the most robust profiles you can ever have. That's fine. We don't want to do the things that other folks are doing. We are incredibly innovative in our box. And we think it's a gap most big companies have globally. And we can do it right now, at least, like nobody else has been able to. So we plug and play with, with downstream players. So I just have one more question. Mm -hmm. So many of us um, have both B2B and B2C customers. Mm -hmm. We have travel agent customers. So when you ask the question, right. do you have direct access to your customer? And mm -hmm. I felt that little pain mm -hmm. go through yeah. me. Uh, the answer is sometimes. Mm -hmm. So we have both those. How does Amparity kind of decide mm -hmm. who is a, an intermediary, mm -hmm. who is a customer of ours, um, or a direct customer? And right. how do they decide then, once they've done that, what type of offers, right. advertising, or other right. ways that we communicate with them right. they should receive? Right. So we are B2C data. So we're able to discern in the data sources and the data sets. 
Um, CRM is great for B2B. At some point further down the line, maybe we would do that. So we're able to kind of focus on that. Two, two other things I'd mention, you know, with Facebook and Cambridge Analytica and Palantir with that that's going on, the privacy, the anonymous data world with GDPR. Imagine if you get audited right now in GDPR. Where are you going as a single source of truth to figure out, think about the time, resource, and money, not just the fines, to figure out versus something if you have your data in a centralized place around the profile with the opt-in, opt-out status. GDPR compliance and audit capabilities are just kind of an ancillary like afterthought. So the value of your known customer data with Cambridge Analytica and Facebook just went up hugely overnight. And the ability for things like GDPR to be able to have a central truth on your profile and be able to get to what opt-in, opt-out status are and all different types of channels. And, and new channels keep coming up every day, right? Voice, it's going to be some other social channel as well. Anybody have any questions who hasn't slided? I have a question yet? here. Yes, Thank you so much uh, for taking my question. Now, on the long line of GDPR specifically, I was wondering if you've done any advisory work for your clients. It sounds like your clients have a lot of deterministic data, having the CRM mm -hmm. database. Uh, what is the best practice from the user uh, interface in terms of getting the proper opting in uh, yeah. from the user perspective? I think, you know, from GDPR, I, you know, obviously legal and other entities are and should be leading in your company as far as deciding overall where your risk is. Um, from a what's the right interface, I don't think that there's a single answer. I would argue, though, that if you don't have the ability very quickly, and I think I saw Jay maybe from Expedia over here nodding his head, if you don't have the ability, if something happens with GDPR, to figure it out quickly in any system, because you might have a custom system, if you can't get to that, you're going to have to weed through every single system, right, up and downstream of where did that customer data come from, where was it stored, which channel did it go out? And so my point is customer data platforms, not just Amparity, but customer data platforms happen to uniquely connect as long as you're connecting all your customer data together to be able to provide that in a quick reference point. I don't have the expertise to speak outside across the continuum by my own personal point of view, but I wouldn't profess to share that in a field of experts.